Hi, everybody. Welcome. Sorry for the short delay. There's always something going on out there on the internet land. But welcome back to the Horn Hangouts. It's so great to see so many of you here. We've been reading the chat. There's people really from all over the place watching. And my mum in London. Always have to say hello to my mum in London. I'm really, really happy to welcome back Horken Hardenberger to the Horn Hangouts. It's your se you're the first person to do a second one. Oh, what a an full honor. proper second one, really. Yeah, nice. Really. Nice, so nice. welcome back. Thank you so much. We'll get back to what you're doing here in Berlin in a moment. And I wanted to let all you know that today's an even more special hangout, not only because Hawkins here, but because we're filming this, this hangout for Sarah's Music. We're featuring Hawken in the next episode of Sarah's Music on Deutsche Welle. And look, the team, the room is full of cameras and sound people and my makeup lady, Jan. And um, look, there they all are. Jakob, my wonderful video mixer. Everybody wave. <laughs> <laughs> The Hangout world is waving. Tim Kelly in Melbourne running from live stream, from five stream. Tim, welcome, and it's 5 a.m. there, so thank you for getting up. Thanks a lot. So, Hawken, back to you. Welcome back to Berlin. Thank you. And you're here for, it's strange, you've been playing for so long, but you have a big premiere this week. I do. It's the first time I play with the Berlin Philharmonic. It's, I can't believe yeah, it. Yeah, it's, it's nice. It, it really feels very, very nice. Well, you it's know? about time. It's about time, but it wasn't sure, you know. I'm, um, I had a student about, I think, maybe 15 years ago. You know, and I had already been going and I'd done all my recordings and, and he was asking, you know, what, what, what else is there? What, what? And I said, well, I want to bring the trumpet right up there, you know, to the, to the best orchestras, to the, you know, the major conductors and play, play real, real music, real pieces. And, and I remember him saying, it's not going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and then it is. You know. And here you are. Yeah. It's really incredible. Yeah. You're playing a piece you know very well. You've played it over 60 times, H.K. Gruber's uh, Ariel. Ariel yes. and, uh, and he, he wrote it for you. He did. And he, I heard an interview today um, uh, that he'd, he'd given about the piece. And not only did you blow a cow horn onto his answer phone, um, <laughs> he, you showed him all the little tricks of taking out slides and all sorts of trumpety things. I did, because I, I knew he would, he would take it and use it in a very poetic manner, which he, he definitely is. It's, it's a masterpiece. Well, really. If you, if you want to know anything about this piece, we have the part here, we have the cow <laughs> horn, we have the trumpet you use for the piece, so we'll, we'll get to the technical things. Um, all these people around the world saying hello, that's what I love about the Horn Hangouts, is that they're glo it's global, <laughs> but a very special friend of yours. Um, you will see, we have a little video of a very special friend of yours who's, a, who's been on the same journey as you mm -hmm. from all those years ago. Have a quick look at this little film, a little hello from Hawken from a very special friend. Greetings, Hawken, from north of the Arctic Circle. Uh, actually, did you know that we performed the same night you and I in the Musikverein and Berlin Philharmonie yesterday? Who would have thought that 30 years ago when we were doing this uh, Café Arton, talking about how people said that you blow the trombone and trumpet. Uh, I hope you have a fantastic time in Berlin. I'm just now on the way to my concert uh, hall in Norway, Stormen, to record Tchaikovsky for. Have a nice evening. Take care. Bye. Awesome, Greetings. Christian Lindberg. Yay. <laughs> you two have been, you've been friends forever. Oh, very, very long time. You know, long time before there was this possibility of getting to it. We met the very first time in Montreux. There was organized an international conference for brass musicians. So it was International Trumpet Guild and Trombone Association and Horn, I don't know what that's called. And, and, <laughs> and Horn and, nerds and, unite. And, yes, all, <laughs> and everybody came, you know. And Doc Schitzer came out of the Soviet Union uh, very rarely and he came. and. Everybody was there, and I remember traveling down, and there I met Christian, you know, another, another nerd. Uh, you two are uh, total and utter brass nerds. You practiced yes. all hours that God yeah. gave. Yeah, and we had this, we had this idea that, that uh, the solo possibility. There were no real soloists in your branch making their living, at least. Oh, just well, we had, because we, we had Maurice André, of course. You had Maurice. But and, there was... and Doc Schitzer and Edward Tarr. And, but trombone? And Trombone, not many. Not really. No. And you two were so cute. In the days when, when Christian had a lot of hair and you had even more hair, <laughs> we have another little video just to show you what the two boys used to get up to. <laughs>
Aren't they cute? All that hair. <laughs> Lots of hair. All that hair. 1990, probably. But something. that was actually, you were quite uh, unique in Pioneers because you talked to the audience and you included them and they were sitting in a cool area, you know. Yeah, it was in the Academy of Arts in London and it was kind of a kiddies' concert. And, and, and we, I don't even think it was our own idea to do this compilation of opera things. And there was a documentary being made about me and, and this was like a side product of that and it became quite a hit and we I think we could have still been doing that if you could we have, wanted you, you to. could have really done the rounds. Yeah. Both of you have not only made it as soloists in the Brasswood, you're both conductors. Well Christian more than I I would say. I, I, I conduct a little bit. A little bit. A little bit. Come on, you do you do three projects a year? No, I maybe six. Six? Maybe, maybe. Okay. But but I mean depending on uh, you know, I really, I really like it, uh, but I also realize, you know, my old teacher, Pierre Thibault, he used to say, for the trumpet, one lifetime is not enough, he said. <laughs> <laughs> and he was right, you know, and I think, I think it's the same for conducting. I don't, I, don't, I don't believe that, you know, just because I like it, that I suddenly, when I finish playing trumpet, uh, can be a great conductor. But I, I do my best because I like it, and whatever it... Whatever it becomes, it becomes. <laughs> That's great. We have a lot of people, a lot of friends watching. Mark Julin is watching the whole studio in Akron. You know, you did a fantastic interview for him. He did it, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, that's, that's my, my research. So, hi, Mark. Thanks for watching. <laughs> hi to all your, your studio. And um, he's already asked. We're starting with some questions, you know, because we have all the history. We did the Hangout the last time. Yes. And we went through your entire life about you getting a trumpet age of eight, about you studying in Paris, about making it as a soloist. So I'm going to ask many questions that are coming in online today. They might be a little bit random, but it's okay. It keeps it, keeps it fresh. And because Mark has uh, done such a great job on the interview, which helped me a lot, I'm going to start with his question. Yes. Okay, Mark? He is asked, please could you ask Hawken how important solfege was to his training and if you use it now when you learn new works? It was hugely important, the solfege. I mean, I came from, from Sweden and had, only had private teaching by Boo Nilsson on the trumpet, and then only one year in the academy where we did our version of ear training. And then I, I got to Paris, and Thibaut said, here you have to do solfege, and he went and bought, it was like 16 volumes of something and I was completely overwhelmed I thought I you didn't will... speak French either no I didn't no 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 and I'd never seen this stuff and and uh, and then I did get into the school and I we had I think we had something like nine hours a week oh, of so solfege fresh. and to be able to to make the exam I even took some extra I wish uh, I could do that we, we didn't have that and anyway. and it's for the trumpet especially or brass instruments I would say it's it's vital because it saves you from, from guessing yeah. too much. I mean, I don't have perfect pitch. So with, the modern, with these modern works that you, that you premiere, I mean, do you use it, do you use it at home when you sing? I do, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm not as good at the solfege part yeah. as I was then, but I mean, the, the, what is the essence of it? I, I still use very much. Wow. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think it should be on everybody's curriculum. I, I wish I could do it. We had Ricardo Muti last, last week, and he's, he's like also one of the last experts in this. It's, it's incredible. It's yes, just what... yes. And we had a fantastic teacher in Paris, Madame Giraudot de Basset, who, who would, uh, she was a chain smoker, and she, but she, was, she would take us by the arm and hand, <laughs> and she would go through this. And we would do wonderful things. You know, we would sing forêt songs on solfege without the text. Oh. And, and uh, we'd, we'd, you know, it really taught you where a note belongs in the, in the yeah. chord and things Amazing. like that. No, Fantastic very, very thing. Good. I wish. In my next life, I will learn this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we have uh, Jean-Luc says, Hi, Hawken and Sarah. I come from Brittany to listen to you and Gabor or Tamash. It's Tamash on Saturday. Looking forward to hearing the, the concerto. Um, F. Horn Patrick says, Greetings from Canada. Um, I would just like to know how your techniques on how to stay, stay in the game mentally. Do you stay in the game mentally? Stay in the game mentally, yeah. Uh, big question, very big question. Um, How do you prepare? Well, I, I work very, very hard still many hours a day. I, um, I think to stay in it mentally, you have to have the technical tools ready. You have to know where they are. 
uh, they have to be accessible you, to know what tools to use. And you don't need always the same thing every day. No, and and then to to listen to yourself, to to the body, to your mind, where where, where you're at, um, and then to dare to open the doors. Uh, it's 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 a very big question. Do you have a, do you have a, a routine before a concert? Before do you have a meditation? Do you have a, a focus? Do you have a mantra? Not really. I think it's very much again a, a kind of balance act. You try to see it as much as a normal day as possible, yet you know that it's not. So uh, uh, Thursday uh, will be a normal day because you're just doing a premiere with the Berlin Film. Yeah, but, uh, yeah. Just... but you know that I honestly, very, very honestly, I really see as a bonus. You know, in April, April '81, I played in this hall the first time. April 1981. Yeah, Incredible. Haydn Concerto in the Rias Stelt for program after the RID uh, competition, and. I played the Haydn, and there was something about you know playing it in such a hall where you get you get the second instrument, a new instrument, and I just felt at that moment. I remember a moment just after the cadence. I remember this is what I want to do. Wow. This is exactly what I want to do. And then, of course, I had dreamed. Well, maybe one day I will play with even with the Berlin Philharmonic, and I've played with. I would say. I played with Vienna, all the London orchestras, uh, all the American orchestras. So it, it is nice. That it, and I see it as a bonus, you know. And it's a piece you know incredibly well. Well, it's a great piece. Right. And, and we, just, we don't know it very well <laughs> yet. <laughs> and to have it, you know, together with Mahler 5, where you then see suddenly all the Viennese colors of Gruber come out even more clearly when it's juxtaposed it fit, with, with, with Marla. Well yeah, very well. Oh, well, it's, it's going to be an amazing concert. <laughs> and it's going to be live on the Digital Concert Hall, which means everybody, Everyone. all your fans, yes. can tune in and, and watch it live. Yeah. Fantastic. Live hangouts, live Digital Concert Hall. I tell you, this world is getting <laughs> fantastic. Um, there's a very nice question from, where did it go? Oh, it, they, they come in and they, uh, Tony, breakfasting in New Zealand, <laughs> says, what kind of routine do you suggest for a keen amateur with about 20 minutes to practice every day? Good question. Ah, well, um, there are little, like, like the little Chikovitz, uh, Vincent Chikovitz warm-up. That doesn't take much more than, than 10 12 minutes, and then some scales, and then a tune that you like playing. It's I important. Would say. To yeah, tunes. absolutely. And yes. preferably also find a moment to make music with other people. <laughs> oh, Richard Ilomaki says Is there a piece in the repertoire for Sarah on horn and Hawken on trumpet? That would be a great project. Oh, we'll have to get someone to yeah. write us a nice little <laughs> duet. Anybody out there that would like to write us a duet? <laughs> We're happy to play it. Maybe not tonight, but. Uh... <laughs> um, Gunther G from Austria has an interesting question. Does Hawkan play any style of jazz music, or do you, have you ever thought of playing jazz music? Well, I always say uh, that you cannot be a trumpet player and not have some sort of relation to jazz music. Especially in, in, in Ariel. In Ariel, there's very much influence, you know, concerto like the Bernd Olist, Zimmermann, uh, even more. There's, there's always, and, and it's so much part of our history, you know, how the jazz musicians uh, taught us, you know, how to, the blue notes. You know. And, and uh, I would say I, I admire jazz and I, I'm very influenced by it and sometimes I work with jazz musicians. I would find it pretentious to say that I play jazz when I do that. I, I, I get can you improvise? Can I can you? improvise in some way. I'm not a very good improviser on trad you know, chords. I can a little bit. You can but doodle I'm, around. Yeah, but, but you know, it's, that's, that's a... That's an art of its own, uh, but we can very much draw inspiration, as I think they do from us. They do from uh, us, but I remember, I remember the Winter Marsalis Band, Jazz at Lincoln Center, where they came to play with us, and, uh, and we were in total awe of them, and their trumpet section was uh, just mm. unbelievable. But I remember Marcus Printers, one of the trumpet players, said, man, it's scary what you guys do. You only get one chance to play one note. We can miss it five times and call it <laughs> improvisation. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but it's... It, both has its challenge, and we can certainly uh, get inspired <laughs> by each other. And, and as I said, I sometimes work very near, but I wouldn't call it jazz. 
You don't mind me just firing these questions Absolutely. at you? Go just ahead. get them in there because there's so many great ones coming in. Um, F1 Patrick said, thank you for your words of wisdom. Hans in Vancouver is watching at the Music College with all the brass section. Hello to Vancouver. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Sam wants to know, what is your favorite piece in the solo repertoire? Is it... It's hard to say. It's like, what's your favorite That's color? very hard, yes. And, you know, I've, I've premiered all these pieces. And, of course, the music that's been written for me feels that's very close. That's kind of like musical children, you know. And, and, uh, but definitely Ariel that I'm playing this week is, is one of the, the big favorites. It, it's such a wide spectrum of, of, of emotions and, and, and possibilities. Incredibly uh, difficult <laughs> Very for everybody. Diffi- no, very difficult, yeah, but the, it, to a purpose. You know, he, he is one of those composers. He doesn't write difficult because he's trying to be clever. I mean, he, he sits down and he, he says, I listen to the music and, and, and then I write it down. And then he takes the life that it, it does. And it's, it happens to be, in a way, complicated, but at the same time, quite accessible. So it's... it's, it's mm. yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. <laughs> a great question just came in from Venezuela. So from, from Vancouver to Venezuela. Isn't it amazing? Yeah. It's, it's really... I'd just like to add. Yes, please. Uh, because there's also others. You know, I mean, the, the, my favorite... I, I, it's hard to say that one is your favorite. You know? But it's probably a daily thing. Maybe today this of is your favorite Of course. The one you play has yeah. to be. The one you play has to be the favorite right now. And uh, but the, you know Bert Russell from eighty six. That was the, is that the first thing you commissioned, or one of the big one the main the, first? The, the first big commission, and it was great. I was uh, not so long ago. I was in Basel in the Sacher archives, you know, seven floors down into the mountain, oh. and there was the original score of Sacre de Printemps, and a lot of other things that Sacher collected. And he, of course, commissioned Bert Russell. So in a drawer, not far away from. Right of Spring was endless parade with all the sketches, all the all the you know attempts, and it was so moving to see that. Fantastic! Yeah. Oh wow, next to the Right of Spring. Yeah. Oh, but sorry for no, me. no, no. That's really. I mean, the the thing is, is that that what what you've done for the trumpet world, you have extended the repertoire beyond belief, um, and that that's what you really actually set out set out to do. You've had people write things for you ever since. The beginning, you know, but this is yeah. like when did Harrison write his piece? That was in eighty six. Eighty yeah. six, yeah. and 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 it's it's still carrying on. I mean, you played you played Brett Dean's piece, uh, Dramatis Personae. That that was the most recent one that was written for you. Yes. And next week you're off to Perth. Yes. To to premiere another one. Yeah. yeah. No, but you know, if we're gonna say that the trumpet has a possibility of being a solo instrument on, in the classical scene, then there needs to be. Um, substantial repertoire, you yes. know, something that that is really can compete with a gr- great violin concerto or a great piano concerto or a singer. You know, the choices that a conductor has or a program committee are endless. You know. Is there a danger though? Because today I had a very nice phone call with Mark Anthony Turnage, who has written the piece for your premiering next week in Perth, yes. and it's got a really fantastic name, <laughs> Hawken. The piece is called. Hawken. And he said he's a little bit worried that maybe no one else is going to play it because it's got your, it's called by your name and no one will dare yeah, to I didn't it. ask. I didn't ask him to call it that. <laughs> it's I, a great just name. to be clear. <laughs> it's yeah. a lot more cheerful than the last piece. The name is a lot more cheerful. Yes. Um, out of the wreckage. From the wreckage. From the wreckage. Yes. That was it. Well, how do you know that Hawken is more cheerful? <laughs> I assume. <laughs> but some of these pieces you've had commissioned are so fiendishly difficult. Have you found that people are daring to play them, or would you wish them more people to play them? I wish more people to play them, but that it's normal. It takes... You know, the, the, the Zimmermann concerto that I played last week was written in 1954. Of course, not for me. Uh, and it was sleeping for 30 years because it was considered unplayable. And then suddenly it isn't unplayable anymore. And now I see younger people taking up Ariel and Basking and all these pieces. It just takes a little time. Do you feel very proud? Oh, of very. Years. And, you know, uh, it was, was a journey that was necessary. And, and I really hope that, that people will benefit from it. Well, there'll be a, a Hawken piece out there. It's wonderful. It's, how, how is it? it I heard he said it's in three movements. It's quite a classical... It's classical in its form. Uh, it's got... Uh, influences from the different uh, 
kind of ethnic flavors to parts of it, and there is a choral variation. He uses many different things that uh, no, it looks to be you know that, that's I'm, that's in a, about ten days, two weeks, and that's I don't know what it is. It really is like a, like a baby, you know. It will be something, and you you're practicing all these notes and things and you're guessing what it will be and even if you can read the score there's no way you're going to know exactly what it feels like. Do you guys want a bit of insider information? There's a little bit of insider information here for Hawkins' next premiere in Perth. Mark Anthony Turner said to me today that when Hawkins got the music um, you didn't answer for quite a while and then on the day that the deadline was to send in the parts you said ah it's too easy I could sight read that. <laughs> <laughs> And he's, he's changed the whole thing. He changed about 70% of the part, and now it's fiendishly difficult. So it serves you right, probably. Yeah, it's my own fault. <laughs> but I love that story. Yeah, I, I, it's not that I need it to be difficult. It's, you know, it's not difficulty for the sake of it. That's definitely no, not the case. you just needed it to be... But, but there is the element of, of when I get a new piece, I do like it to, to move me, me in another direction. Mm -hmm. Well... I want to be able to hear it. Can you live stream it from Perth for us? I don't know. If the, maybe the or that orchestra has that. Maybe. It's or we'll possible. send Tim over from Melbourne yes, and get yes. him to live stream it. Um, okay, a few more questions because they're coming in fast and furious. Um, Trump from Venezuela says, thank you for this. Does Hawker never wish he played horn? And a good question. It is a good question. I mean, all the repertoire you have, you know, Strauss, Brahms, Beethoven, Mozart, doesn't end. But maybe, if I was, maybe I wouldn't have gone this route, you know. Uh, then I would have just taken the next great piece of repertoire and studied that when I, when I felt I needed to move on. But trumpet was for you from the very beginning. Absolutely. Your dad got you an old beat-up trumpet mm. for Christmas. Mm. Your parents aren't musicians. No, not at all. So why did he, he just picked it up and thought maybe... Well, he'd heard, a, he'd heard a concert with Louis Armstrong many years before, and it was just a fun thing to do, to buy for Christmas. I mean, it cost nothing, and it was really beaten up, but it, I got hooked. You loved it. Yeah. And also your first, uh, first teacher was very, very inspiring. That's, that's yes, the most important thing for... Absolutely. Boone Nilsson, uh, and, you know, from the word go, long, long lessons and very intense and... I just thought, this is, this is it. This is and your parents never had to tell you to practice, never had to send you to your room to practice? No, no. And I still like practicing. Yeah. I know. Uh, yeah. Your wife probably has to get you out of the room <laughs> from practicing instead of sending you to your room to practice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Okie dokie. Here we go. Lots more. Um, Hans, maybe uh, going on from, from that, the last question from Venezuela. Um, are there any transferable articulation exercises that someone can use who has recently transferred from horn to horn from trumpet. I mean, it's hard to, to, to pick out specific things, but what could someone... Do? Is it so different, what, what we horn players I do? I don't think so. I wouldn't think so. I think my idea about it is that, that the body will have the answer if you, if you ask it. You know, if you, in your speech, in your language, you will have the sounds or the beginning of sounds that you are looking for. As, lo as long as you can identify what you are looking for. It has to start with the idea. It has to start up here. That you hear something and, I, and you think, that's what I want. Then you can start looking in your language. There, there's going to be that sound somehow. And then you can maybe find exercises that go along that line. But, but usually, usually the body has... Some sort of and answer. And I think sound is everything. If it's sounding right, you're doing it right. If it's not sounding good, then we have to change something. Yes, yes. It, it sounds so simple, but a lot of students forget sometimes to listen to themselves. Exactly. It's the, it's the, this is the, our most important tool. And, and listening, real listening, is what you do before. Not, not after to see if it was that good or bad or criticizing. Listening is inside before so that you really determine what it is you want to come out. It also helps us not split notes. 
It does. We still <laughs> split them. But. <laughs> we try our best not to split them. Yes. Someone said recently, yeah, the violinists, they have 500 different ways of starting yes, it. Yes. You know, nice, roundly, this and that. Yeah. We brass players, we either get it or we don't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but we love it anyway. Yeah. Um, there's a nice question uh, that came in. Uh, where is it? Oh, yeah. James from Canada says, do you have any funny anecdotes that happened to you while performing? Oh, my God. I like these sort of questions. Thanks, James. Good question. <laughs> God, uh, many. They will all come out in a book. <laughs> in the book? No, but I, I always find it difficult to think of, of you know, special anecdotes. Because uh, now, now, is, now is more important. You're right, yeah. you're right. But everybody always loves the stories about the mutes falling down during the performance or someone falling asleep in the front row. Or... Yeah, well, I, I can think of one when you talk about the first row. I, that was in Australia, actually. And I was going to play this big concerto. Which one? Uh, the Michael Blake Watkins concerto. And, you know, I, I walk in and I'm, I'm all concentrated. And, and there's a little lady sitting straight in front of me. And as soon as I take the trumpet up, she goes... <laughs> <laughs> and did she stay like yeah, that the she whole stayed piece? like this the whole time. And I, as soon as I had a... I, I, I wanted to go and say that maybe it's better you go home, but, but she... Uh, she paid her money? Yeah, yeah. But she didn't want to listen? No. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. Well, thanks for that question. I like, I like, I like those stories. Um, Sven has a question, which actually I, I like. He's written it a few times, so I'm happy. You, if, you, if, you did, if we don't answer your question, do send them in again, because they go past so fast. I, I miss them a lot of the times. Mr. Hardenberger, why are some players more gifted for the high register than others? Does this have, have a lot to do with mouth cavity and teeth? And what is your golden tip for the high registers? Greeting from Amsterdam. Good questions. Uh, well, um, I didn't have a natural high register, for instance. Um, I can hear all the trumpet players all around the world going, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. No, it's true. It's, it's really? true. Uh, but again, you have to identify and then work to, towards... Uh, and it can have a little bit to do with cavity and teeth, but I don't think very much. I mean, I, we, are, we are similar enough. I, I, I don't much believe in that a physical thing. Um, but I do believe in, in, in aimed practice. And the right setup. I mean, maybe, I don't know, is sure. it the same with trumpets? If horns, if your mouthpiece is too big, it's hard to play in the high Absolutely. range. Absolutely. And, and, uh, and if you produce the notes in the low register inefficiently, you will, it will be even more inefficient when, when you play it. I have a great question from the Sarah's music team. That's Magda sitting there in the corner. <laughs> so we are going to answer the Sarah's music team question. What was the most difficult piece that you've ever played? Well, this one uh, that I'm playing this week. Will really? Have to. And, then, and then he, he can we, wrote... Can we just show people how difficult this piece is? Well, Mind the cow horn. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. So. Maybe if you take oh. that. Okay. That's just a little bit. Right, which one are we holding this into? George, here we go. <laughs> that is a lot of notes. And that's just page one, two, and three, right? Yeah. But they are beautiful notes. And but I would say when also when first time I got the birch whistle piece, I stared at it for a long time and didn't understand anything. You said something great in an interview. You said birch whistle would send you a page at a time, and yeah. every time you got a page, you wanted to go back to bed. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, so this Ariel, oh my Ariel, goodness. but then he wrote the little brother busking, and in some ways, uh, as difficult. I love this. I love these parts that are so well used. And also, at the very end, I don't know if you can see this, George, it's written where, where you've played it. Yeah. Everywhere. And on the back as well, look at all those performances. <laughs> and there's room for the Berlin Phil right there. <laughs> yeah. I'm so happy about that. <laughs> Thanks for bringing that. That's, that's great. So you, you'd say Ariel was, was one of the most difficult and broken. Oh, definitely. Well, definitely. Okay. well the, the, Ariel is, is, is more. All right. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Thank you. Can, and Ariel is difficult because you have a large orchestra. You have to do all these things, and then you have a large orchestra to compete I against. I was thinking that today yeah. when we were rehearsing it, we were incredibly loud. Yeah. I mean, everyone was sight reading it, and, yes. and you know how stressful the second movement is for yes. everyone. Yeah. But I was wondering where there's room for you to be heard in that yeah. piece. The no, first the, movement is okay. 
the, the piece is very well composed, and, and if all dynamics are observed, yeah. then, then oh. there's no problem. Okay. <laughs> right, I've got the message. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's get back to some trumpet nerd questions. Trumpet nerds, we love you. Keep them coming, keep them coming. <laughs> um, right, we have uh, 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 Gerasimos, Gerasimos. Sorry, tell me how to pronounce your name and tell me where you're asking from. What mouthpiece do you use to play on the piccolo trumpet? I'm going to play the Brandenburg Concerto in 10 days and have a hard, hard time with mouthpiece choice. A bit late to change your mouthpiece for a Brandenburg. Yes, I would say um, don't change too much 10 days before a performance. Uh, the mouthpiece, my, my thinking about it is that, I mean, these are very old. This, I've been playing That's this. That's not for the piccolo. Though, no, but I'm going to explain. Okay. Uh, this one Thomas Stevens gave to me in 19. 19- 84, oh. and I haven't changed. And you haven't lost it. No, Losing a mouthpiece is the most it's, traumatic thing ever. It is. And then my thinking was that I will have Toshi Kameyama, who made this one, make the piccolo mouthpiece should, as well. Should, and can you show them to Henning here in the camera? Yeah, and then... Have they got your breakfast in them? No. Okay. And then the, <laughs> the important uh, thing for me was to have a similar rim. The rim, yeah. so that what touches is sure. the the oh, contact is the same, yeah. and then and then just a little flatter, okay. uh, and then not a deep cup, and, okay. but that, to have the same contact, then the, then the changing is not so. But bad. as you say, it's really important. Don't play around with mouthpieces ten ten days before a Brandenburg concerto. That's a little no. little bit little bit dangerous, um, but good luck. Absolutely. Good luck. Yeah. It's going to be great. Emmanuel Feiner from Austria has said another question, uh, question for you. Did you ever have a period of time during your studies or afterwards as a performer when you had serious embouchure problems? And if you did, how did you solve them? I, I haven't. The only period I can remember was when I was very, very, very young. I had maybe only played for a year or two. And suddenly, Boo insisted that I come for a lesson every evening. That week, so something must have been wrong, and I I don't know what it was. Uh, and then, what can I think of other? Because you're you're a big practicer. I oh mean, yes. We said on the last hangout, this ten thousand hours of practice that a, a musician has to do before they make it to a professional. You'd already done those ten thousand hours, probably in the first couple of years. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you practice a lot. Yeah. And I don't think people understand. Um, some of that discipline, that's, and, and it's not interesting for the general audience. You know, Maria Callas, she, she, she said, people are not interested in seeing us try. You know, the, the hard work part, and that's all for us. I mean, that's shop talk. Uh, but there is a lot of discipline involved. I mean, after a, a Zimmermann concerto, I cannot just go away. You know, there's some things I have to do so that the next day I'm not... So you Damaged. repair your embouchure yes. after a concert? I will have to do that after each concert this week. So but you come and hear the Mahler, I hope. Only on the last concert. Only on the last concert. Yeah. That's incredible. Because of, because of that. Uh, and I can remember a couple of other times. There was one time in Paris when I was, I was sick for such a long time. I couldn't play for about a month. And coming back from that, uh, it was, you know, the sound was awful. Just <laughs> like that. <laughs> So, so what do you do to Well, in fact, that's when I developed what is now a big part of my warm-up, the, the, this very slow bending notes in, in the medium range until the sound is pure. That, because I was so stubborn, I just stood in the corner and played bending notes on, on very easy notes until the sound was, was clear. And so out of that trouble... I gained something. Came okay, your best exercise. Yes. You were doing that exercise for years. You talked about it in that yeah. documentary that yeah. all those years ago. Yes. That you've done. Yeah. Bending notes. Okay, trumpet players of the world bend notes. I, I think it's good for probably, well, the trombones can bend notes a little bit easier. It, it, they are good if you yeah. listen to what yeah. you do. That, that's it. You know, if, it's, if, you, if you're listening for the center of the sound and then you do them, then, then you're fine. There are so many questions coming in, and we, 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 let's, just, let's just do really quick answers to um, quite a few of these. I really like to get everyone in because there, there's so many people asking great stuff. A very quick question from Mia. How do you cope with anxiety and stage fright? Do you even have anxiety oh, and stage yes. fright? Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. How I, do you cope with it? 
well, recognizing it. And accepting it. Yes, and trying to, you know, thinking of it as a big vessel or something that you can, if you can take this power and, and turn it and make it go in the direction that you want. How? Uh, how? Um, well, to try to not, it's, that's, it's a big, it's not to think too much, of, not feel sorry, first of all, for yourself, because we are doing something that we really love doing. And um, to get yourself out of the equation. Yes, a little bit. You know, and also, you know, nowadays, I'm almost thankful that I get nervous because it means that I, I still, it means a lot to me. So that's one way how, you know, to really take it, as, take it and be thankful for it and, and, and use it as, as fuel. That's, that's really good advice. We're, we're so, we tend to be so scared of being nervous that yeah. uh, it actually can be a good sign. And realize also that perfection is only something in our imagination. There is no such thing as a perfect performance. How, however good it is, it can always go somewhere else and be something else. And it, it will change. This piece has changed all these times. And it's, it's, all, it's all like a journey for, the, for that the piece with, with me in it. That's the greatest thing about music. And that's why we should be thankful, even if we get a little anxious. Thank you. That's a great, a great, great answer. Um, Kendall Gray, who's a horn player, um, wants to know, are there any musicians, brass or non-brass, for whom you draw particular inspiration? Who are they and what do you admire about them? Oh, my God. Can we... Uh, a couple uh, of them. Uh, you said a quick, yeah, quick, quick I know, I'm choosing all the... Really, oh, it always happens impossible. at the hangouts. Everyone's very quiet at the beginning. And the minute I say, well, we're getting towards the end, they, all the questions come flo floating in. Yeah, but, I mean, they're all the... It, it never ends, you know. They're, they're all the, there's so many pieces of music that one will not even have time to hear in a lifetime. But, I mean, I just answered... A question about but my my favorite recording and one of them you can't, because you can't answer that but one of them is an old recording with Oistrach and Richter playing Brahms sonatas for instance um, I like Clifford Brown a lot I like Yussi Björling a lot I like Heifetz a lot I, millions it's like there's a wonderful letter from Theo van Gogh when he asking Vincent no Vincent Vince, the other way around Vincent is asking Theo you know, who do you like? And I like, and he lists this whole <laughs> bunch. And that's how it should be. You know, we have, I think it's very dangerous to only like one and try to copy, copy, copy. It's, it's, it's really important to select and then make your mind up what it is. Ah, how do you want that to sound? It's also really important, I think, to, for, for students to have the experience of, of finding out about all these people because sometimes I meet students, they spend all their time in a practice room mm. um, and don't go to jazz concert or to art galleries or to... Exactly. You know, you need to know everything about art in the world to Absolutely. be a good musician. And even though this is all great, a live concert is the thing. I mean, that, that is what will really give you inspiration. Um, so, That's what we do it for. Amen. Yes, I mean, absolutely. 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 Um, I've got a question you might not like. Uh, Hawken, <laughs> do you feel it, uh, from Santiago, Hawken, do you feel it's more difficult to be accurate with age? Have you felt, have you felt it's getting any more difficult? You look great, by the way. <laughs> thank, you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, or he meant you. I'm sure. Or oh, maybe he meant, uh, did you mean me? No. Yeah, I'm, no, sure, no, 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 no I, I'm he sure he meant you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think some things get easier. You know, it's it's these muscles here in the face. They, they, if you give them the right exercises, they seem to lock into what they have to do, and that that part gets easier. The routine part. The muscular memory. Muscular memory. Um, they, it, it's like a lock almost, and 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 you, they it's they remember where the notes are. And, and, and you can rely on that while, yes. while performing. And, and other things get easier. I mean, you, hopefully you get a little wiser. Uh, you have certainly more stories to tell. These things get you easier. You know that not to drink so many beers the night before a concert. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, some things, I mean, the discipline doesn't get less. You know, the, and, and I could, some years ago, I could take longer time off, completely off playing than I can now. Now I just have to keep, keep it soft. Keep it going. Yeah. Okay. 
couple of little ones. Uh, John wants to know, it's, hi Hawken, he's wondering how much you teach beside your soloist career. Uh, a little. I, in Malmo, I teach uh, Bo Nilsson until now. And I uh, have a class, a small class, and I do a master class every month. There's some on YouTube as well. Some, some yes, yeah. Yours. And I like to do master classes when I visit, especially countries uh, far away. Uh, it's a nice thing to do. And Jonathan wants to know, what valve oil do you use? I love these questions. There's always mouthpiece and valve oil <laughs> questions. What valve oil do you use? <laughs> <laughs> I don't even. No, I do know. But I, I got another one the other day. Cause, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, no, we'll, we'll answer that one later. We don't know yeah. about that. Um, and Jess has a question. Hi, Hawken. In my experience, trumpet players are usually the tricksters in the band. Did you ever play jokes on your musical, colle musical colleagues, maybe as a student? Or were you too busy practicing to play jokes? I've, I've played a few jokes, I think. But... Uh, yeah. Swedes are so serious. Yes. They, they don't play jokes, do they? <laughs> <laughs> Never. Um, like a question, um, do you ever get the feeling when you take out your trumpet that you're starting from scratch again? Every morning. Every morning. But in a good sense. Yeah. You know, I think that's something, to again, to embrace and that feeling. Because um, if you do that, if you are curious, and if you listen to your, what your body, your lip, you know, one morning the lip feels... This thick, and another morning it's all fine and it's all answered. If you have that flexibility, you're much more likely to have a good day. Uh, and I also remember Elga Howarth saying, just take for granted that you are at a certain level. I saw this guy, Jordan Spieth, who won the Masters at golf, yeah, 21. And he said, because they said, you know, in golf, it's the same, you know, one day good, the other day disaster. There's just an awful lot more money riding on it. It's yes, a bad day. Yeah, but he said, I just, I just expect to play well every day. And I do what has to be done. And then, of course, we don't. We don't. There is this fluctuation. But as, as a general mindset... Would you choose the trumpet again in I, your next life? I guess. If but, your dad came with it... But maybe with a, I'm, I'm born as a shrimp. <laughs> <laughs> Horken Hardenberger, the shrimp. That's an interesting thought. But, you know, I, uh, I mean, you, 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 it, it's, it's part of you. It's, your, it, it, it's, it is. It's part of your body. Definitely. It's, it's, yeah, it's definitely. part of you, but it's... Uh, it's, it's an impossible question to answer, I think. Um, and I also, I, I also have difficulty with people who say, if I... If I could live my life again, I would do exactly the same. You know, I, I saw a wonderful interview with Woody Allen, and he said exactly this. I, I said, I don't understand people who say that. I, I regret almost everything. Uh, not that I do, yeah. but I think if you, if, you, if you set your mind that you would do exactly the same thing, then you, again you're stuck in a corner, okay. and you're not open. So what, what's, um, what is there now? You've got a premiere of uh, Mark... Uh, uh, Mark Anthony turns his piece in a week. What's yes. coming after that? And then there you have is your Berlin film premiere. You've made it now. <laughs> no. Uh, then there is a piece by Stephen Mackey, American composer. Then there's a piece by Thierry Pecou, Paris, and Betsy Jollas, Paris. So the pieces they they keep coming. They're in. flowing yeah, in. Yeah. Incredible. Lucky trumpet players. Really <laughs> lucky trumpet players of the world. And I, I hope they're all going to be played for for many years after because it's incredible what you're doing for the repertoire well thank you well, really thank you for all your questions thank you so much um Hawken will get a copy of the chat so uh, if you want to write any highs or anything then do um do let us know um i have a question for you Hawken. on sarah's music mm -hmm. we always have a horn challenge as you saw you said you'd watch the labeck sisters doing the horn challenge and placido had a go at the horn challenge mm. you play the trumpet so I'm not quite sure. I'd like to do a live online horn challenge, but getting you to play the French horn is not really... I think, you sh I think that we should reverse the challenge. That I have to play the trumpet? No, no, no. You are a horn player. I'm a horn player. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you brought that just for decoration. <laughs> <laughs> now let's Explain see what, what this is. This is, uh, <laughs> as used in Gruber's Ariel, a Swedish cow horn. As it has been played for thousands of years, uh, the cow horn, the inside taking out, a mouthpiece cut with a knife, uh, three holes, 
uh, nice little. Uh, lo the, the first hole is always placed where the whole horn balances. Isn't that nice? It's very nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you, 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 you. Can I put a mouthpiece in there? No, no. you cannot put a mouthpiece in there. <laughs> and it's pitched. Well, it's kind of a cow in B flat, yeah. Okay, a cow in B flat. Yeah. I've never played a cow in B flat no. before. So okay. you cover the three holes. This was not my plan. My plan <laughs> is for my guests to do. So this is the Hawken Hardenberger horn challenge. I cover the three holes like this, yeah. and I blow. Yes. And you get lipstick on your arm. Ah, okay. All right, ready to go? Horn challenge, live horn hangout challenge. I've accepted the challenge from Hawken Hardenberger to try and make a noise out of this cow horn in B flat. Right, ready? <laughs> Oh, that's yeah, actually really nice. That is very good. Now, try, try to open all the holes. Uh, oh. Oh. I never played such a high note on my horn before. <laughs> I'm really proud. I'm a low horn player. Oh, thank you for that. I'm very, I'm very proud. <laughs> thank you for that horn challenge. I really appreciate it. Um, Hawken, thank you. Thank you have you. so many f friends and fans around, around the world. And, and it's been nice meeting them. It's great to mm. meet them. Thank you for being out there with you. Um, as a play out, we're going to just play you a little piece of Hawken many years ago um, playing Norma variations. Oh, yeah. and, and we'll say goodbye, good night, and fantastic, have a fantastic week in Berlin. And I'm really looking forward to playing Ariel you. with you tomorrow. Yeah. Come back soon. <laughs> <laughs> Jakob, take it away.